and intelligent, intelligent. He was the only man that I know, even with the good team we had, and the only man I know in Carroll in modern times that could pass a ball 40 yards onto a forward's chest, just in front of him. Wouldn't have to look around, wouldn't have to jump for it, be there. Well, he had unbelievable ability. I, I could, so no one to play him, like if he really made up his mind, on a particular day, but once he got going, there's no one to play him. Like. I think he was 19 when he won his first senior championship with Tinoid and was a very important man in that game. Uh, oh, superb balls. Tommy DeVar never got a bad ball. In. You know, he was an athlete and he was very agile. Um, he had good skill. He wouldn't be outplayed by anything, there's no question about that. He definitely won the best of all time. It was life. It was part of life. It was my life. You yeah, played it since you were so high and you spent 20, 30 years playing football. It was a game I just loved. Just loved the game, loved the competition, the whole lot, social side of it, sports side of it. It was just, met great people, met great friends, met a few enemies, but never carried them off fields or anything like that. Like, you know, but yeah, hard enough to walk away from it, yeah. But when I did walk away from it, that was it, so I never looked back. And the first car invariably be Paddy Quirk. He was a superman to train. He's a better man to train now than Dwyer. But I wouldn't take from Dwyer now training. Dwyer, they never run off early or he'd never be complaining. He'd do a few spits, like when you give him a few sprints, and then he'd be, ah, <coughs> spitting. But he had me killed in this kind of. But he keep a head at the very, very end. And they played. Like when he went out in that field, he played. Like, now he mightn't be well. You know, he would, I have to say this against him, like, um, he would have Porter on a Saturday night, which Quirk would never would, like, you know. But then, that's the way it is. Like, Dwyer would actually do the very same thing he was playing with Leinster. He told me he'd break away and get a few pints. You'd have to get another pint or two to kind of settle him. But that'd be maybe in his imagination, like. But it's all playing some unbelievable great games for Carroll. Starting off, he was very young and playing under 21 at 16. Wouldn't be that unusual, but um, I suppose for his initial start off, he was a member of the panel and a member of the team and played his role but as time went on he became an integral part of the team and by the second year and the third year he was a dominant feature um, for opposition and a feared a feared member by all opposition in the county at under 21 level and even at senior level. Tommy Howard from Kilcullen is the match referee and look at this for the jostling before the game starts Jim Ronin and Tommy Dwyer well, that, for a start, is rare, if not unique, that the referee has to speak to two players before the game is actually on, and they're still at it. Once he was in a game, he was in a game 100%. And one of my early recollections of him playing a senior game was that because you, you would have played underage with him, you'd be watching him, and he'd point to the line ball, and that was the time when the line ball was uh, off the ground. So to first score a line ball in that particular part from the sideline under the part of the stand is no way. That's a fair kick at 19 years of age. 79, it was his, I think it was his first senior final. He's 17. He was so young, they wouldn't start him centre field. They picked him number 13 and they brought him out to third midfielder. And he, he run the game. Oh, it would have been very highly uh, recognised. Well, you'd have to recognise him first of all. Big, tall, red-headed guy. Red hair, um, his height, his speed, his agility, his his power, and his skill. It's a very accurate uh, passer of the ball from 30, 40, 50 yards. He'd a he'd a brilliant left foot. He two two good feet, but his left foot was particularly accurate. Seriously, oh, he brilliant left foot. Could do anything. I had always intended playing as long as I could. And that's what happened. I couldn't play anymore. I just was broke up. So that was it. It was time to call it a day. Everybody, like, it's like life. Some people like the football and were happy to train hard. 
we all trained dog and we run some lads like to play and to live it up a bit as well I was one of these lads that liked to live it up a bit as well oh it should have to be drink wouldn't it <laughs> uh, <laughs> I hope this is not going around to too much in the public anyhow but <laughs> My friend asked after that, and I got on very well with him. He's a super club player as well. And a friend asked, and he liked me training. Got on well together, like, probably the fact that we're fond of the old guard and a bit of crack and that. They said they were getting ready to go to the first round of the Munster Championship. They were playing Clare. Somewhere in Clare, I think it was, I don't know where exactly it was in Clare. I, mean, I think it was in Dennis, I'm not sure. But we went to the match. We made it in time for the match on the Sunday. And we went from there up to Lisdon Varna. But he was at an ask a dinner dance anyhow. And there were some men to drink too. And it was held in the Seven Oaks. And uh, I left at about two o'clock or half two in the morning, which was, we say, reasonably late by any standard, I suppose. And we, of course, booked into a bed and breakfast, done it right this time. And we had a skinful that night and we had to get ships on the way home. But the next morning I woke up on the home, so I live in College Street, it's a very small house on the home. You'd hear the traffic coming, you wouldn't hear it now, there's no traffic, but you'd hear it coming there on a Saturday morning, so there's a boat. I said to him, what time is it there? Half nine, quarter to ten, she says, I have to get, get no shower. So the next thing anyhow, I heard this bit of a noise coming along, like galley home, like. So yes, I did some let out fairly early, enjoying himself anyhow. So the next thing I heard a voice, Harry! Get up and make coffee! What the heck the fuck? I know you're there! <laughs> Come to the wind, even! <laughs> so I said, oh, gee, she says, it's Tommy Dwyer. And Dwyer fell in love with the woman behind the chip bar. <laughs> and he wouldn't come home with us. And we uh, went home, was it well near one o'clock or after? And he still wasn't home at half three. And we were getting a bit worried. And Yank said he'll be all right. Big fella, look at him, look after himself. So he came in at all hours. I'm not sure if it was five o'clock or quarter past five, but it was breaking daylight anyway. So we thought he might have been successful in his catch. I was always scared of my life, but I was six foot seven. And you have to look the old head coming in the door. And there if he fell, like air a bit of old water for glass, so that you'd have him in the fucking house. He'd bits like Because he, he'd hit bang down. And that's, I was always very nervous about that with him. I loved him and I'd never turn him away. And we had our breakfast half finished and Dwyer came down. Oh, Jesus, I'm dying. And we asked him how he got on. I never want a bag of chips again. So we don't know whether he was successful or not. But he was eating his breakfast with a priest. <laughs> <laughs> Carol again, Dublin, Dr. Cullen Park. If my memory serves me right now, um, it was a bank holiday weekend and he was outstanding. He knew he'd be Dublin now. I hate saying this on his own. He had a great game in Dublin, one wet afternoon. And it needed big men to perform, and the biggest man, not just in height, but as a leader, performed on the day. He didn't go in to be a leader, but he led by example. And that's the way he was. The, if the challenge was laid down to him, you know, there was no better man to rise to the challenge. And that was a great team. Hannah Horn, you named them by Skeevney and all those like. Only four and Dwyer got man in the match. It was televised and Dwyer got man in the match. Tommy Dwyer. Big Tommy shaping up to be the man of the match here in Dr. Cullen Park. Tommy Dwyer from Pidwiler. I think it's man on the field. That's a good in swing, a very good indeed. Lord McCaffrey lets it go. Big Tommy Dwyer from Tidwiler. Try it on his left foot. The only other score for Carlo was by his fellow midfielder, Nick Nolan. So, a point apiece for the midfielder. Nick Nolan. Back to Dwyer. That's a good score. Carlo's best move of the game. Well, we got so heavily bit. And I happened to get man of the match, so that was an achievement in itself. Plus, I think it was the first, it was the first bank holiday in London that a match was ever played. I'm not really sure it was.
But to me, it was just another match. You know, I wouldn't. Oh, yeah, I probably was the only man from Carroll ever that got got a, a man in the match award. But there was more. There was more matches to me. Welcome back. Well, Peter Landy has now made his way up to his commentary position, so we're set to start play in the first test of this Gaelic football series. Australia and Ireland, once again, back to Cork, and here's Peter. Just happened to be picked on the team. We just went training and we played, what was it, uh, played with Connacht Durham first. That was the very first game down in uh, down in, in Salt Hill, down in Galway, and got on fairly well at that. And was picked in to play full forward in the first test match ever. Junior, it was an awful honour, big honour for, for the club, big honour for all the players even to be associated with the like of a man like this. Afterwards he talked about the topography of Valor, where every town you went through, like Greg Cullen was Tommy Murphy, and um, I travelled the country a lot, and people would ask you where you were from, and you'd say Carlo. For that 10 years, 15 years of you said you were from Carlo, they'd say, oh yeah, the big red lad, or Tommy Dwyer, or that's a fine footballer you have there. And a decent person. Yeah. And very, very skillful in anything he ever done. I suppose he'd always been known as the big, long, red fella who played centre field for Carlo. He's one of the best known footballers Carlo ever has had, I suppose. Like, I'm not somebody that stays in the past or anything like that, or like I just move on and live the day as it is. But he was always a very consistent man, and the bigger the day, the better Tommy Dwyer was. Yeah, Tommy would have had in, in, for any of the lads that were lucky enough to play with him, had county or club level. He certainly he remains. At the time I was playing, I was probably as good as what was around. But what was before me, I don't know. I can't comment. What's a, what's what's after happening in front of me? Later on, we became, you know, we, we became good friends. He was lovely to watch. Lovely to watch. He was an artist. We well, were looking for a best friend in the morning. I'd put down Tommy Dory's number one. I have to like him messing around today. It's a pity. And uh, I wish him well. But I was happy the way I felt. So I'm not going to say whether it was or not. We leave the hope to yourselves that you're in the end. But if you asked Dwyer this morning, Dwyer said, Ah, Harv, I had fun. He says, I played the game. I enjoyed it as well. They played as good as anyone. And I had fun. And I can look back at it that way. I had better days than anybody. Which maybe that's the spirit of the game, isn't it? drinking as well, Nick Murphy. So we got the next thing anyhow, we stopped in Blessington. And went into Hennessy's and Blessington anyhow, it was kind of a wooded area there like. It was a great GA man. And it was, it was the first round of the Leinster under 21 championship and there were all, there was five different venues. But Wickler after playing Dublin, and we didn't know the result like. But when we went in, some of the Wickler lads were there. And I knew the cousin country in training to Nihili down in Wickler and that. And they had beaten Dublin, Barney Rockingham, which was a great surprise. It was a great help for us as well. We said, yes, so Dublin gone now with a great chance. So we got, we drank there for a while anyhow. And the next thing, we uh, came out. And there was a guy that had a nickname on him, Tasha. Corn was his name. From Radville. He got now lift up on the bus. He was a great support of the team. And we carried a shirt on him and a flag and all that. He was fierce on the porter too. And we're heading back for the bus anyhow, and he was after coming over to the tile, and he had a can in his hand. And down near the end of Blessington, down the Hennessy's anyhow. And the next thing was, was these skinheads from Dublin there. And uh, Tosh said, look, like the shout at her, Ah, that fucking d- Wicklick gave it to garden, the garden boys gave it to you today, he says. And we'll give it to the fucking garden boys when we meet them, he says. 
Carlo. And we see as the next surprise, we're mine. And we see, but anyhow, we act a fucking place. And the skinheads come after him. And they're going to bait up old Corn anyhow. And they got the next thing, Dwyer and Mick Murphy to go after them. And they ran them down this little bit of a wood near Hennessy. You can see it still. Now, I've been no good at fighting. But the base to go anyhow, and Morph was after them, and there was about five of these skinheads. And the next thing anyhow, Dwyer Corral told him anyhow. This is the truth. And he says to Morph, These are mine, he says, leave these two to me. And the, all they could see in the distance, like they had gone away a bit now, was Dwyer catching both of them. Hitting their two heads <laughs> And down they went, like. 